I think the songwriters and most of artists will tell you the same thing, and we mean it. You know, the songs are the backbone of our industry. They always have been. That's kind of a, a mainstay of what Nashville is about. It all begins with a song. And uh, when I came to Nashville, I mean, I really came here expecting to be writing songs for a long time before my career as an artist took off. I uh, got very lucky and it happened the other way, but when I first got here, I was I, I hit all these spots like this and got on any stage that I could get on to sing and started meeting songwriters and writing songs all the time. I mean, this was the foundation of my beginning when I came to town. So it's, a, it's a very important, you know, to, to remember what the backbone of all of this is. And not only that, you are still a songwriter. So Absolutely, still write all the time. You go to your songwriting roots tonight. That's kind of cool. I do, and uh, I'm going to pull some things out, some things we've been working on, some funny stuff, some, some things that are on the new album, uh, and uh, just have fun with it. This is, this is a time to not be commercial to play stuff that's just really cool and tell the stories behind the songs and where they came from and what the vision was behind it and what inspired it. And that's that's the cool part about songwriting, to really be able to, to translate that to uh, the people that appreciate that aspect. Because a lot of people don't. There's a lot of fans out there that love the music and they have a good time with it. They don't really care about the craft of songwriting. And there's a, there's a whole different breed of fan that comes to this kind of stuff that really appreciates the song. And it's more intimate, too. You see Absolutely. big shows. How is it? To get to, I know you said you were itching to get back, but how does it feel to play to a more intimate crowd? I like it. You know, it's just one of the many pieces of variety that we get to do. You know, uh, you go play at fairs and festivals or big arenas for tens of thousands of people, and then you might be at a casino for a thousand folks or playing Billy Bob's with four or five thousand people or, you know, playing a private party in somebody's backyard for 20 or coming here and doing these kind of things. I love the variety. It never gets old. And this is the world's largest songwriting festival. Of course it has to be here in Nashville. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, we have some of the best poets in the world. I mean, there's people that come here and do this for a living. I mean, they're very educated. You know, uh, uh, it, it's just, it's it's the art of poetry with music. It's, it's I think it's really cool. And there's there's some really amazingly talented people here. And I was talking to you at the Turkey Fry. You were busy working on an album. It's getting ready to come out in August. Yes, well, album's let's, done. Let's talk a little bit about the album starting with the single because it's out. So let's talk starting with the single. Tell me about the single and uh, your part in that and, and why you love it so much. Well, Stop, Drop, and Roll, first single, uh, my first uh, full production project in about five years. And the uh, single was just fun, fresh. I wanted to do uh, some things on this album that were edgier and more contemporary with everything that's going on in the format. Uh, and this seemed to be unanimous across the board with everybody in my camp. They thought this was the, the appropriate lead-off single. It's just fun. and It's kind of a love song. It's just sexy and got some sass to it. You know, it's just fun. Is it a good representation of what we can expect for the rest of the album? It, it's, it's a good representation of a piece of it. I don't know. This album has many different dynamics to it. It started off in one direction. And after a lengthy conversation with Kenny Rogers about learning to reinvent yourself through the years of being in the music business, the album kind of changed course and made me rethink what it was I was trying to say and what I needed to do to be relevant in the music business again. And it, it took a new direction, and it made me rethink. I, I'm saying that, it, it made it a little bit more challenging to sequence uh, it made me go back in and change the players on some of the stuff that I had originally cut. So this this album took over two years to work on. This was the longest project from start to finish that I've ever done in all the years I've been making records. I mean, because it, it, it took some turns throughout the process to get it all wrapped up. But I think now, as you look at it in its compilation, the uh, the title of the album is Headlights, Taillights, and Radios. And that's a song from one of the song uh, a line from one of the songs. And I, I, I chose that because... There was part of the record that was done with the intention of being yesterday and reflective and more traditional, and part of the album that was looking down the road and wanting to be progressive. So you've got the headlights and the taillights, and I thought it was very appropriate for the balance of this record. So when you listen to it, you'll have to uh, figure out which ones are the taillights and which ones are the headlights. Well, which song, <laughs> what's the song that comes from? Which song uh, it's called Blacktop, and it's, uh, it's about... Uh, Cruising around with your girl on the weekends and just uh, running around on the blacktop, you know, just uh, being a kid and having a good time. It's not a common thing to do to take lyrics from a song that's not the title track and make it the title. You I know, know, and as you know, I've always, I've always picked a song title uh, uh, other than like a greatest hits package or whatever, but none of them really spoke to me of what the album was about. I had nothing that wrapped it up. 
and that line did. It, it said everything the album was about, you know. So it sounds like you're going to please the, the fans that liked your old stuff and then also please the country music fans of today, getting a little both in there. I hope, uh, you know, and I hope, um, I hope that people just appreciate the music because, it, you know, I, Kenny really enlightened me a lot. It really made me back up and think about where I was at with my career and, and just uh, that I needed to, to get a little edgier. I needed to freshen things up. I needed to challenge myself. I needed to grow. I needed to stop looking back in yesterday and hoping that things were going to come back to the way they used to be because that was it's long gone. And if I want to be relevant in the business, then I need to step up and, and make some changes and grow and evolve. And I, I think it's very healthy. I really pushed myself to do some things that 10 years ago, I don't know if I was capable of doing. So there, it it was. And it's even more difficult to do some of them live night after night because I really push my range. A lot of them are very rangy, very powerful, dynamic. Some of them are a challenge to do. It's, it's really pushed me. Very cool. Yeah. Anything else? Song-wise, maybe another song you want to mention on the album that you really want people to... Because when I do this, I like to play a little bit of songs throughout. And so if there's any one that you want to talk about... I'm going to do one for you tonight, and I'll tell the story about it live. But I'll, I'll give you... I was... Uh, uh, it's the last cut on the record, and it's called Butterfly. Uh, I was uh, I was watching... I guess it was 60 Minutes. One of those Sunday news pieces before you watch football on Sundays, you know. And they were, they were doing a, a piece on the Joplin Hurricane. I mean, the Joplin tornado several years ago. And uh, they were talking about how a lot of the kids that were saved that had been buried in the rubble and stuff uh, said that there were butterfly people that came down and protected them, that kept them comfortable, that, that really kept them feeling safe and stuff and, and, and made them stay alert and stuff until people came to get them out. And that really intrigued me, and I started looking up butterfly people, and I found that they'd been seen at a lot of disasters around the world, like at Chernobyl, they'd been seen during the wars and stuff. And I thought we were having a, a me and a Flip and Huck got together, and we were talking about this idea, and I said, look, if, if y'all like it, let's write this, because really what it was, the butterfly people are angels, and they, they come down and they protect you if it's not your time, but they also come and take your soul to heaven. So we wrote part of the, the song about them coming down and taking... You know, one of your grandparents when they pass away on to the other side. So it's pretty powerful. So I, I thought it. Uh, I thought it was uh, just a very cool life message song. And this is interviews going to be embargoed until later. So this isn't anything I'm giving away in case yeah. you're not saying. Do you um, have any comp anybody you do duets with? And you mentioned Kenny. Does he just no duets? Uh, no duets on this record. Uh, I, the last big hit that I had was the thing with Tim and Kenny and I, so I felt like it was really time for me to, to stand on my own and, and have some stuff that came out that was just me, uh, especially with me really pushing myself to excel and grow. Uh, I think it's time to, to really uh, uh, go out there and bust my tail and go reconnect with radio and do all the things that I need to be done to, to make myself relevant again. Production team, were you part of that? or did you Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, been uh, part of the whole thing from start to finish. Co-produced it with Flip Anderson, who's going to be here singing some stuff tonight. Uh, so, yeah, I've been involved in every aspect of it all the way through. Very cool. Anything else you want to tell your fans or maybe even new fans out there mm -hmm. about this album I didn't ask? I don't know. I, I just think uh, I think this is going to be a real cool record for the old fans and, and uh, the people that have been following me for a long time to watch the growth and the maturity come and and hopefully connect with a lot of young people that will go back and listen to the older stuff as well. I think this is kind of a, this is a pivotal album. This is going to be the point of, uh, of getting back in the game and being relevant again or moving on to retirement, <laughs> which I'm not going to do anytime soon. <laughs> Number 13, too. So this is a 13th studio album, is that right? So yeah, that's it. That's a lot, a long time to be in the business, so it wouldn't be horrible career. It's a pretty awesome body of work. It really is. I'm very proud of it as I look back over all of it.